Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to give you my first impressions of update 3.9. However, I do need to explain a couple things before we get into the uh, details of the game. Unfortunately, this video is late because of Netmarble. They were originally planning to update the game and have it live at 1 a.m. my time. I was live streaming. They delayed it until 3 a.m. I continued to live stream. Then at 3 a.m. they decided to delay it again until 5 a.m. So they couldn't really get their shit together. It kind of forced me to go to bed super late. And because of that, I wasn't able to get up and play the game and make this video all before 10 a.m. as I normally do. It's just basically impossible. Uh, to do that and I'm pretty irritated with them for doing that and for now it seems like the compensation was a five-star ticket which is pretty embarrassing it's this admin gift right here I think it's pretty trash but whatever uh, additionally I also look like this and sound like this because I just woke up so yeah you're gonna have to deal with that today anyways on to the actual update I think it's on the whole as a summary a good update again I think that the game mode change which is the the one thing I was most looking forward to uh, didn't go far enough my early uh, results and my early uh, reports from this because I haven't actually tried the Alliance battle are that it's good uh, that it's a little bit easier uh, that's it's a bit more fun but again it doesn't take away the main aspect of extreme Alliance battle Andre's kind of running around the room right now it doesn't take away the main aspect, which is spam all your skills with uh, the best characters and the strongest characters. So we'll have to see how they change it from there. But they actually made a lot of quali quality of life changes. They introduced a lot of cool new characters. And it appears as though they've been a little bit more generous or a little bit less uh, intent on getting things from us in order to get those characters. So let's start with the additional quality of life changes that were not in the patch notes. So what they actually did was they changed around the, the honor and token shops, the honor and chaos token shops, uh, which is something that we had been asking for for a long time. But I think people stopped asking for it because they thought it was never going to happen, which is hilarious. So as soon as we stop expecting it, then Marvel decides to get their act together. Now in the uh, honor uh, chest shop you can get uh, Uru I've used it once already because I have you know almost 60,000 tokens saved up I don't use them for anything uh, and the results are decent uh, more often than not you get at least one star Uru that you want I got two two star three two stars the two I don't need the physical defense and energy defense more often than not you can use those extra Uru just to equip before you amplify, before you equip the Uru you actually want. So they're basically just good for filler, but I got some crit rate, I got some two star crit rate, I got some attack speed, some HP, some energy, attack, some dodge, I got some, just some useful stuff. Uh, it's better than, it's definitely better than the bio one if you already have all the characters. Uh, and even if you don't, most of them are bad. It's probably about as good as the card chest, so you can kind of think of it that way. It's just more options. But in addition to that, ho, oh, She Hulk. So now you can get the A-Force characters from the Honor and Chaos token shop. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it, it takes a long time to farm them. I did the math. 30 bios for 5,000 is abysmally slow. But hey, it's a new way and it's free. And it leaves us hope for Nova, Anti-Man, and Blue Marvel, right? Uh, and they also added Mkron shards. To the Chaos shop, they added the ISO-8 chest. This is probably trash. I would not do this. I don't recommend it because Chaos Tokens are much harder to farm and the Obelisk Chest is much more valuable than ISOA Chest, much more valuable. They also added Singularity and Sister Grim. Of course, they don't have three t shops or three token shops, so they can't add them each. They uh, overloaded the Chaos Store, I think, because Chaos Tokens are harder to come by. You can see 50,000 versus 16,000 is a big difference. Uh, and then they didn't add any additional uh, resources that you can, like, there's no Mkron or, Fet or Phoenix Feathers or something like that. This is the rank one black antimatter that's been here for months and months since we had that uh, kind of random update where they added them. But that was a pretty cool feature. Uh, I thought it was nice that they did that. The event shop is, on the other hand, probably one of the uh, more let down aspects of this update. Uh, these rewards are just terrible. I think the hidden tickets are honestly the best part of this because you can only get hidden tickets through crystals and login events, so definitely I would pick this up. I'm probably going to. Uh, and then, yeah, I just I don't want Cyclops' uh, X genes, and I don't need Angels either, because you can get them for free with energy from the million of Dimension Rifts. Everyone is going to be opening Dimension Rifts for Angel for the next, like, six weeks, okay? We haven't had a new Dimension Rift character in months. So you don't have to worry, child. 
Archangel's got a plan for you. Uh, but seriously, you don't need uh, to get them from the, the event quest. Uh, as far as Angel goes, I'll talk about the characters in a little bit, but his card is pretty lame, kind of. Uh, if you go to the cards, you can actually see all of them, even if you don't have it. It's got physical attack and movement speed as base stats, which is pretty bad, but it's actually kind of interesting. Movement speed uh, can be fun in the right circumstances, so I think it's kind of a fun card, and it definitely fits Angel's MO, flying around, being physical. Uh, but it can roll decent stats if you roll it perfectly. Max HP, cooldown, energy attack, all attack. I know, physical attack and movement speed, not the best stats. It's kind of a meme card, uh, but maybe it would work in certain situations. It would be hilarious to see someone get an entirely physical set using like that Punisher card, the Black Panther card, this Angel card, and just rock like 100% physical damage and be just blitzing people uh, with physical characters. Speaking of physical characters, let's check out the new characters and what we can expect or what's in store for them. So I went over to the skill preview, uh, starting with the uniforms, I think both of them are cool looking but optional. Uh, I think Cyclops is only uh, unif the cy the, in short, I think it's only a mandatory purchase if you play Extreme Alliance Battle competitively. It only changes one skill. Ready? Yeah, it's the Fidget Spinner. Yeah, he does a triangle. Illuminati confirmed. It does a lot of damage, it looks like, but it probably does not that much more damage than his existing uh, villain uniform. And of course, it uh, changes him back to a hero, I believe. Actually, I didn't check, but I'm sure it does. Uh, otherwise, people would have reported that it didn't. So, there's that. Kind of d disappointing if you think about it. Every other skill is the same. You know, his skills are not that interesting. I mean, his third skill looks extremely cool. His fifth skill, yeah. But they could have changed one and two. You know, they're they're cool looking, but they could have gone on the ones and twos. So that's a little bit, you know, whatever. Uh, I honestly think that both of these uniforms were tacked on at the end. Uh, I think they had been approved a while ago, and then Netmarble just decided to throw them in for this update, rather than leaving them for a later update for a bigger uh, X-Men update. They probably tried to spread it out and spread out the joy. I love the way that this uniform looks, don't get me wrong, but uh, again, it only changes one skill. It, it says that it changes Wolverine's fifth skill, it doesn't actually change it, it just keeps the changed skill from his uh, uh, Age of Apocalypse which is just adding the stun at the end. So the fifth skill actually doesn't change if you're comparing it to Age of Apocalypse. And then his third skill changes. So instead of being the Berserker Rush from his default uniform or being the Jump Back Omega Blast from his uh, Age of Apocalypse uniform, it's just this kind of four-step claw or three-step claw. Eh, it's really not interesting and it's really not going to be impactful. I mean, is this going to do more damage in Extreme Alliance Battle? Probably not probably going to do about as much damage as uh, his Age of Apocalypse or like I mean the, the difference is probably going to be like 50,000 it's not going to be a huge difference unless they've tweaked the numbers under the hood and we can't tell but from the skills themselves and the animations and the number of hits it doesn't appear to be uh, a game changer and it also flows less uh, successfully or le if the flow is not as good on this one as it is with the Age of Apocalypse uniform because he jumps forward and jumps back. The jump back is actually really helpful to allow you to disengage from the Frost Beast and not get snared if you're not using a Snare Obelisk, whereas this puts you right back in his face, especially if you combo two into, into three. You're not really going anywhere, so it's going to make it a lot harder to uh, dodge the Snare. So I'm a little bit disappointed uh, with the uniforms. They look great, but they don't really perform on the level that we're used to uniforms performing, especially at the more expensive price tag of 1050 As far as the new characters go, however, this is where a lot of their efforts were put, and I can't really blame them because these characters look and feel amazing. If you love the X-Men, yeah, this is, the, this is where the money is. Uh, some people are a bit confused about Angel using uh, blasts from his hands and these yellow lasers. I am a little bit confused myself, but yeah. So these are his skills, uh, if you haven't had a chance to look at them. His second skill is super reminiscent of uh, Blue Marvel, so I think they copied and pasted that one. I feel like some of his other skills they also copied and pasted. His fourth skill looks surprisingly similar to somebody else's, but I can't pin who it is. It might be Falcon or it might be uh, Vulture, but I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, he looks very cool, lots of iframes, should be a solid free-to-play player. And he has the same uniform, or almost the same leadership as Jean Grey. 
His leadership is 12 seconds of debuff on a 25 second cooldown. Jean Grey's is 12 seconds of debuff on a 20 second cooldown. So it's pretty amazing if you think about it. Archangel's or Angel's uh, leadership is almost as good as Jean Grey's. Then we have Emma Frost. We're going to talk about her cost in just a little bit, but from reports that I'm hearing, because I don't have the character just yet, she's extremely OP. Uh, unlike Adam Warlock, where you can compare their prices, I don't think you can compare her impact to Adam Warlock. I think she's going to change the meta. Uh, her fifth skill uh, does have this new mechanic called Mind Control, or Dominance of Spirit. Mind Control. Uh, and it actually does what you think it would do. I'm going to turn on the AI. I know it's going to make the sound horrendous, but just watch what happens to the robots. I'm going to cast the skill and then turn on the AI and just watch what they do. They start attacking each other, at least the ones that I've gotten with the mind control. And if I hit them all with the mind control, they're all going to start attacking each other right now. And the, the area of effect for this skill is actually massive. So this is going to be very interesting. Uh, if this works on all characters, if this works on uh, other heroes in something like Alliance Conquest or Alliance Tournament, this might be the new best skill in the game, hands down. To make your enemies Jean Grey turn around and use their fifth skill on your enemies Quicksilver, I mean, think, thinking about how quickly characters get melted now. And then imagine they're melting each other instead of melting you on top of it. So basically, even if you only hit one character with this skill, a 3 versus 3 immediately turns into a 4 versus 2. There's almost no chance, even for 5 seconds. You're going to get at least 2 skills off because most people have max attack speed. That's insane. So, yeah, this could be massive. I can't really understate how powerful it is to make a character attack his teammate. That's just... Unless they only use auto attacks or something like that, there if there might be some sort of uh, scripting in it to make it balanced, then it might not be as game changing as I'm saying. But if you can have access to skills, if you don't have access to cooldowns, like if it just resets all of the skills as well, uh, at least from the AI's point of view or the scripting point of view, then it might be uh, just bananas. Then we have Magic, a character who I think has a pretty awesome uh, new type of skill effect. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch the top of the screen here next to Master of Limbo and Master of Limbo and Master of Limbo. Yeah, creative. Uh, you're going to see a pop-up here with a timer. This one right here, Mixed Magic, and it says next effect activates after three uses. If I cast it again... Next effect activates after three uses, and it's got two there. And then if I, and this is, remember, keep in mind, you can cast any skill, so it doesn't have to be the first skill. If I cast it again, she gets that 10% uh, heal. So it's pretty interesting, just comboing Magic's skills will get you uh, heal every three attacks. Uh, speaking of Magic's attacks, they're pretty cool. She's basically a physical blast character, and this is what one of my longtime viewers uh, said to me in the way that they described her on the live stream while I was playing Monster Hunter because I couldn't get into the game because Netmarble sucked at uh, the Android update part of things. And I think that's pretty cool. A physical blast character, we don't have too many of them, and we don't have too many of them that are cool looking and kind of cute, to be honest, uh, like Whiplash. He's definitely a far cry from Magic. But her skills seem pretty cool. The first skill is kind of like Heimdall's. Uh, the second skill is kind of like Heimdall's, uh, but it does have a nice uh, instant iframe, it looks like. Third skill, all another iframe, also kind of looks like Heimdall, but she summons these little cute puppies that uh, are puking, and the puke deals poison damage, so that, that'll be cool. I would be interesting to see if the poison damage from an obelisk uh, buffs their damage. And then her fourth skill looks like Heimdall's. And then her fifth skill doesn't look like Heimdall. It kind of does with the three lasers. It kind of doesn't, but this one looks very cool. You got to admit. The, uh, the body morph, very, very cool. Speaking of morph, where's morph? All right. Uh, last character we have is Colossus. I'm a bit underwhelmed by Colossus, to be honest. I expected him to be cooler. He basically has one good skill, as far as I'm concerned. His first skill, super boring. His second skill, also super boring. His third skill, super mega boring. So for now, he has three really trash-looking skills. And unless they get to uniform, that's not going to change. Reminds me of old Hulk. Then his fourth skill gets a little bit more interesting. He's got an iframe there at the end of the skill, but it's got like two seconds of non-iframe, so it's going to be extremely hard to uh, time to get that protection. And then he has his one good skill, which is his fifth skill. Long iframe, uh, pulls up the ground, hurricane, and then he throws a piece of earth. This reminds me heavily of old Hulk, 
both in a good way and in a bad way. Mostly in a bad way, partially in a good way. Thankfully, Colossus has probably the best uh, skill effects of any of the characters because of besides Emma Frost, because of the fact that he has um, Pierce, I believe, and he also has uh, Reflect, and he gives the team reduction to Reflect. He also has Ignore Dodge. Yeah, he has Pierce and or pen Penetration and Ignore Dodge buff on his fifth skill, which is a hundred percent. So he should be uh, decent at swatting those pesky speed characters. Hopefully, Quicksilver. Uh, at least when he uses his fifth skill, if he ever uses his fifth skill. So on the whole, I think I'm super impressed with the new X-Men. Uh, Colossus I'm a little bit uh, kind of questioning about, but otherwise that's cool. Then I want to talk about the check and rewards, which just popped up for some reason. This is pretty huge. So people might be confused by this, but we have our regular monthly check-in, which is the exact same. It doesn't change at all. We have a seven day check-in event, which is pretty par the course for new updates. It's got some pretty decent rewards, 80 Phoenix feathers, 20 hidden tickets, 150 Mcron crystals. But then the 28 special check-in special, the 28 day special check-in event is the one that people are really crying and screaming about in a good way. And basically uh, you get a whole bunch of things. I mean, it's 28 days of logging in. You get 200,000 gold, you get a six-star character selector at the end of the first three weeks. So, I mean, if you're a new player, you're getting a huge leg up and you're getting the ability to catch up in a huge way. I mean, from those three weeks as well, you get 450 or 350 Chaos Nornstones. That's gigantic. I, I really can't understate how good this uh, check-in event is. And then at the end of the fourth week, uh, on top of a Mythic Comic Card, you get a Tier 2 Character Selector. So we've never seen this type of item before, but it's basically, instead of a 6-star Character Selector, it's a Tier 2 Character Selector. So if you have a character at 1 star, or even if you don't have the character, I think you can just immediately get them to Tier 2. We're going to have to see who that includes, if I'm, if I'm understanding the Tier 2 Character Selector correctly. Um, it's probably not going to include the X-Men, it's probably not going to include... Uh, premium characters from the bio subscription it's probably not going to include the ultimates but I'm not sure it might actually include some of those characters I don't think it'll include the X-Men but it might include the ultimates which would be wild to give uh, everyone that logs in for 28 days a tier 2 Nova or a tier 2 anti-man that would be fantastic I mean I couldn't really think of a better way to get people to play until Infinity War because for me that's the uh, majority of the reason for this uh, login event. Keep playing this game, give us more time, Infinity Wars around the corner, uh, and I guess the, the look of this check-in event, from my understanding, or if I'm going to extrapolate, is that they're planning something big for Infinity War, and they don't want to lose any more players, in fact, they probably want to gain a lot of new players um, in order to set up for a kind of a Grand Slam home run with Infinity War. Now, I might be being too optimistic, but that's just how I read this 28-day check-in event. We've never had, I believe, a check-in event that lasted this long. We've also never had one that's been this generous. So, it's two unusual things from Netmarble, and it just seems too coincidental. You know, it's already uh, March 21st. 28 days from now, it's going to be towards the end of April, which is when Infinity War comes out. It's also, coincidentally, the three-year anniversary of Marvel Future Fight. So we'll have to wait and see, but that's kind of my initial impression. So those are my initial impressions from the 3.9 update. Let me know what you guys think. Apologies for not going into more depth, but I basically didn't have any time to do that. I had just uh, what people were telling me on the live stream, what people messaged me, and then my own uh, eyes for just a short period of time. But if you want to see more, hit me up on Twitch at 7 p.m. tonight. So in about, I don't know, like five or six hours. Uh, and I will be purchasing stuff, testing stuff, and kind of just going wild on this update, which I wanted to do last night and I couldn't because of the Android shenanigans. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for your patience. Subscribe if you enjoyed the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.